Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Police Quest 2 The Vengeance. We are at the jail and it seems like from what you guys were saying, last time out was a bit of a mix of a time limit that I had no idea existed and also potentially the weird order that I did things making the game glitch out. So it's unclear, you guys don't seem to know whether or not we are screwed. Um, it might be that we'll do whatever we need to do at the jail, get back in the car and we'll get that same cutscene and have to restart. Or we might have bypassed the time limit, I have no idea, you guys don't know. So I think what we're going to do is just crack on, carry on with what we're doing. At least if we have to restart, then I'll know exactly what to do to get back to this point quickly. Um, but yeah, let's look around. <clears throat> let's get started. This is the underground parking garage of the New Lytton City Jail. You're filled with pride as the memories of the dedication ceremonies return. Following your heroic capture of Jesse Baines, aka the Death Angel, you became an instant celebrity. But now, unless you recapture Baines, only the bitter memories of failure will remain. Yeah, okay. Uh, right, is, are these the lockers? Just your basic gun lockers usually found outside most jail cells. Okay, so open locker. Using the key found in the locker door, you open the locker. Okay, put gun in locker. We know about this right from the first game. And then close the locker. You close and lock the locker. Hey, good start. Okay, nice. Uh, there's a camera here. The closed circuit camera allows the, the jailer to monitor anyone entering or leaving the jail. Okay, so I'm guessing same sort of deal as Police Quest 1. We press the button and then we get buzzed in. You signal the jailer by pushing the buzzer. The jailer speaks to you through the PA system. Booking desk, how can, uh, can I help you? Uh, okay. Uh, I, I mean, let us in, please. Um, oh, bonds? I'm not sure what you want me to do. Open door? The jailer's voice booms through the speaker. Please face the camera and show your identification. Show ID. After showing your ID, you hear a loud metal clank as the jailer releases the door locks. Okay, so slightly more complicated to get into the jail in this one. Obviously excited, the jailer says, Bonds, I can't believe what's happened. I can't get over it. We've never had an officer kidnapped before. Oh, that sounds sounds bad. Um, continuing, Baines took Pate and escaped in Pate's car. I sure hope he's okay. Poor kid, he's just a rookie, you know. Heck. We just put together the file on Baines this morning and he's gone already. Okay, well, <clears throat> okay, um, in jail. So, let's look around, I guess. This is the Lytton City Jail prisoner receiving area. Fine. Um, so there was a file on Baines, I think he said. What's this? It's like a fence. You don't see anything interesting. All right, so I'm guessing we have to talk to him. So maybe we need this file on Baines. Talk. You don't need to. Uh, get file. Which file do you want to look at? Uh, get Baines file. Oh, yeah, the jailer says. Let me get Baines's file for you. I'm sure you want to take a look at it. Yeah, we do. Here you go, Bonds. The files have to stay here, so give them back before you leave. The jailer hands you the file on Jesse Baines. Okay. So, this looks similar to the file we had before. Oh, can we take the photo? Is this the mugshot we needed? Jesse Baines, scar tattoos, um, murder, attempted murder. Yeah, can we take the photo? Yeah, we can. All right. Maybe that's the mugshot we need then, because you guys were saying that the one we had before wasn't the one that we needed. Um, close file. Having reviewed the file, you return it. The jailer puts the file away. Okay. Fine. Talk about Pate. You don't need to. Uh, ask about Pate. Oh yeah, the jailer says, you want to look at Pate's file. I'll go get it for you. Okay. So we had to ask about Pate. It's quite lucky that we did that. Here you go, Bonds. The files have to stay here, so give them back before you leave. The jailer hands you the file on Louis Pate. Okay. So, uh, name Pate Lewis, like, alias none... Uh, mail, uh, booking, correctional officer, probation, uh, departmental actions, none. Okay, so, I mean, we know what he looks like now, so that's something, I guess. Um, so, I mean, do we just, uh, give it back, I guess? We can't take a photo by the looks of things, so close file. I've reviewed the file, you return it. The jailer puts the file away. Okay. Uh, so, 
reviewed reviewed files uh can we ask about banes hey sonny you gave it back to me and i put it away don't make me go get it again ask what happened i'm not sure what you want me to do um ask about crime ask about jail escape Yes, he says, we have one man in custody who saw the whole thing. Saxton. Sherman Saxton is his name. The correctional officer continues, just walk over to the interview area and I'll call him out. Okay. Nice. Right. Can we uh, get Saxton's file as well? Which file do you want to look at? Get Saxton file. Okay, maybe there isn't a file for him then. So, uh, ah, here he comes. You here to get me out of this joint? Saxton asks. Oh, I don't think so. No, probably not. Um, I imagine we're going to have to, like, try and make a deal or something here. Ask about uh, jail escape. Oh, yeah, the escape, he says. That dude Baines did a number on your little jailer friend. Baines jumped your little rookie while being moved. It looked like he was holding some sort of knife to the jailer's throat. It looked so easy, Saxton says. I mean, he just grabbed the jailer, put a knife on his throat, and sashayed right out of the jail. Unbelievable. Uh, okay, fine. So, ask about Baines? I don't know nothing about the dude, man, really. Okay, ask about Pate. Never heard of anyone by that name, man. Okay, ask about jail. No, ask for information. All right, well, I wonder if that's all we needed. He's still stand. Oh, no, he's gone. Okay, fine. Maybe that's all we needed then. Um, ask for information. Not sure. Okay. Maybe that's literally all we needed to do here. Uh, we've got the mugshot, which is... So we've got a new mugshot and an old mugshot. I see. So I'm guessing the mugshot we picked up before at the station was an old one. But we needed a new mugshot of what he currently looks like. So maybe that's where the confusion there came from. So um, the question is now, what do we do? Uh, oh, hang on. <laughs> Let's get our gun. Open the locker. Using the locker key from your pocket, you open the locker. Get gun. You take your gun, holster it, then close and lock the locker. Oh, nice. It did that automatically. Okay. Well, um, uh, on the road again, I guess. The road again. So, can we, can we radio? We don't have like a radio extender, so I'm guessing we just radio from the car. I don't know if that's like a... Keefe yells, way up, Sonny, what's the rush? Anyway, where is he always going? Uh, use radio. No, use radio. Keith informs dispatch of your current 1020 and the situation. Okay. Fine. Uh, I mean, that doesn't really sound like he updated anyone on anything, to be honest. So, I don't know. Radio in? Keith looks confused, but we don't have anything new to report, Sonny. All right, fine. Well, uh, the question is now, what do we do? Keith pipes up. Well, buddy boy, let's get this show on the road. Okay, drive. Uh, drive to station. Maybe we go back and update the captain now. Keith frowns. Okay, he says, I have mucho paperwork to finish. Keith grabs the mic and calls dispatch. Dispatch 53, Mary 2 is 10-8 from Lytton City Jail. Right, let's see if it, if we get the, the thing. Keith says, keys the mic. Dispatch 53, Mary 2, be advised we are en route to the office. Uh, we copy you are en route to the office. You listen as the radio comes to life with your call number. We have further traffic for you. Keith grabs the mic and answers. Dispatch 53, Mary 2, go ahead with your traffic. Uh, ten four traffic officer Haynes has located a vehicle belonging to the correctional officer at Oak Tree Mall. After acknowledging the radio call, Keith mumbles to you, "Well, you heard it, big boy. Let's roll." Okay, drive to Oak was it Oak Tree Mall. Be advised, we are en route to Oak Tree Mall. <laughs> I, I do, I've got to admit, I I do miss the old driving game, but this is quite cool as well. We copy you are en route to Oak Tree Mall. Certainly less deaths. Old Oak Tree Mall. Boy, do I know that place. Well, my wife spends half my paycheck there. <laughs> mercy, mercy. We almost had that bulldog for a hood ornament. Q 
Keith comments, uh, can you believe the cars they give us to drive these days? I think I can get better acceleration from my 10 speed bike. Keith contacts dispatch. Dispatch 53 Mary 2, 1097 Oak Tree Mall. Uh, okay, Oak Tree Mall. Hey, we made it and we didn't get game over. So I think we might have potentially bypassed that issue we were running into. I hope. Keith says, look, Sonny, there's Haynes. Okay. Hi, Haynes. Uh, this is definitely the correctional officer's car, Haynes says. It's been sitting here a while, though, he continues. The engine is cold. Sonny, I'm going to take a look around. Keith says, you go ahead and check out the car. Okay. Haynes says, I think I'll go check around a little. There may be some witnesses. Where does Keith go? Like, literally any time we get somewhere. It's a little bit suspicious, I'll be honest. Oh, this mall's really cool, by the way. I like the music as well. Oak Tree Mall. Okay, fine. So we need to have a look at this uh, this car, I suppose. Uh, so, do we need our field kit? Because that's got, like, fingerprint kits and everything in it, I believe. Looking at the, the handbook thing. Uh, get field kit. Okay. Closed trunk. Oh, the music's cool in this bit. I like it. Uh, look, field bit. Uh, field kit. Okay, so it has got plastic baggy, small camera casting plaster, glass vial, eyedropper, fingerprint powder, fingerprint brush, fingerprint tape. So a fingerprint kit, basically. Um, it's got plastic baggy, small camera casting plaster. Okay, do we have like gloves or anything? Because I would imagine we need some gloves. I mean, I might be wrong. Uh, let's uh, put on gloves. Normally you need gloves on for like a... Why is the, the field kit being displayed like that as well? Uh, let's look at the car. Looking around you find nothing. Can we open the door? Not close enough to... No, I don't want to open my door. I want to open the... The um, police car door. Can we get... Oh, we can't get... Alright, let's... Can we open the trunk? The <laughs> drunk. <laughs> open the trunk. You're not close enough to a trunk that you can open. Okay. Open trunk. I've done it again. Open trunk. You're not close enough to a trunk you can open. Uh. Okay. Why? Open door. You're not close enough to your car's door. Yeah, but I don't. I don't want to do that. I want to. I want to open. Um. What's his name? Pate car. Open door. Uh, okay. Looking around, you find nothing. Examine car. You find nothing. Uh, okay, what do we need to type here? Let's think. Let's think. Oh, wait, is it? Hang on, are we looking at the wrong car? Is it this one here? Look, Haynes' car. Okay, is it this one? This side is locked. Oh, okay. So maybe this is the, this is the car. I guess that's Officer Haynes's car. Yeah. Okay. Right. Look in car. So it's diligently finding nothing. Okay. Is there like a glove box? The glove box isn't open. Open the glove box. I'm hoping this is not a random person's car. Okay. Oh, okay. Look, glove box. There's something in there. In the glove compartment, you see bullets, empty holster, car registration. Okay, let's look at the car registration first. Get car registration. You can't get that. Did I type it wrong? No, okay. Get holster. You look at the empty holster and ponder the whereabouts of the gun. You retain it for evidence. Oh, do, were we meant to put that in, like, a bag or something? Uh, okay. Uh, oh, no. Okay, we got we got score. Look at the uh, bullets. Looking the ammunition over, you think, hmm, three rounds of thirty-eight caliber. Better hang on to this for evidence. Okay. And it was just the registration in there right yeah okay uh all right anything else in here do we need to put the bullets in the bag or something you have no reason to do that okay well i, I mean it's evidence so i don't know 
did, did we look at the registration? Look at the registration. You look at the registration after confirming the name Lewis Pate, you return it to the glove box. Okay. Uh, we didn't get score for that, so I'm guessing we didn't need to do that. So uh, close glove box. Uh, is there anything else we can look at, like the steering wheel or something? I just I just want to see if if there's anything else we need to look at. You look, but it doesn't hold your interest. Okay. Search car. Nothing. All right. Closed door. Oh, they're back. Who's this? Hey, Sonny. Hayne shouts. Looks like Baines may have taken another car. This lady says her car has been stolen. Oh, okay. Interesting. Fine. I figure you'll have some questions to ask her, says Haynes. Okay, yeah, well, I mean, we can we can do that. Uh, so, are we... Okay, talk lady. What am I going to do now, she says. My husband is going to kill me when he finds out that the car was stolen. Yeah, I mean, but let's ask about the car. You ask for the description of her car and she says, oh yes, it's a 1986 compact Chevy station wagon. It's black and the license number is CO35. That's all I can remember. Right, I'm going to write this down. Uh, black 1986 uh, Chevy CO35 Reg. Fine. That's, uh, that's useful information. That's all I can remember, officer. All right, nice. Yeah, we're getting a lot of this uh, little fanfare bit of music in this episode. I like it after what happened last time. Uh, I'll take it from here, Sonny. Haynes assures you you've got your work cut out for you. Oh, okay, so it seems like that might be all we needed to do there, seeing as he's taking over. And we're back in control. All right, guys, well, I'll tell you what, we are out of time. So I guess we maybe radio in the description of the stolen vehicle. That would be my guess, but we'll do that next time. So as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne, Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Barry Aldridge, Hobo, Numinous, Coomadin, and Paul Leone. And I'll see you next time.